recall the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, together. Sorry, we're a couple minutes late. Um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Mr. Lockwood, will you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Mr. First Slackman, just for the record, uh, we have two uh, alternates sitting in today, um, for Commissioner Chinny and um, Lupinia. Okay, thank you. Bob, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, appreciate it. So before we get into the agenda, just a couple of preliminary comments, if I can. I want to um, start by thanking all of you, all of you on both boards, and our, our team, Abby, Erica, and Scott. Uh, I recognize that this task we have taken on is uh, above and beyond the normal call of duty. Uh, it's not one we have to do, and it's a difficult task having these um, discussions. And uh, any one of these issues that we are trying to tackle, uh, housing affordability, um, the expansion of our grant list, the um, long-range land use planning, long-range infrastructure planning, any one of them on their own are tough issues to deal with. Uh, but taking the time to work together, um, I think, is um, very beneficial uh, to the community. But it takes a great deal of uh, commitment and courage from each one of you and, and dedication to actually sit down and do it. Although um, I don't think joint planning and zoning and board selecting meetings are unprecedented. I don't know that we can say that. I think they're relatively new for the recent past history. Um, and so I'm grateful that you guys are, are willing to continue to do this um, work. I will say to the public that um, now that we're taking on some of these tasks, um, anybody uh, who disagrees with me, I'm going to give you an opportunity to disagree. Uh, we recognize the magnitude of them. We recognize the importance of them. And we recognize our responsibility that if we're going to take it on, we, we try to do it to the best of our ability. We try to do it methodically. We try to do it thoughtfully. We try to do it efficiently. And you know, we try to do it as transparently as we can. So please recognize and respect that work we're doing, even when you disagree with us. Recognize the extra effort that we're putting in. As far as I know, there's nothing that requires us to have these meetings and to look at these long-range planning. and. and Honestly, the decisions we make today, we probably won't see the fruit of. We're talking about trying to work through issues that will affect future generations, our kids and our grandkids, and what this town will look like 25 years from now. That's, that's not um, easy to do. In fact, the easiest thing for us to do is nothing, to not hold these meetings, to just um, get from one year to the next to the next and address the issues, these other issues as they come up. Um, we're, we're committed to doing otherwise, and we just ask you to kind of understand that. I will also tell you that we recognize that these are tough issues, and they are emotionally charged issues. It's easy for all of us in this room um, to, some, to jump to conclusions, to make assumptions. Let's, let's work hard not to do that. If you have questions about why are we doing something, or what precisely are we doing, just ask. Just ask. We're not doing this work because we had no other work to do, okay? So we want it uh, to be productive for, for all of us. And the last thing I'll say is, you guys have heard me say it before, is look, we're not always going to agree. In fact, that is impossible. But the fact that we don't always agree, again, understand that that doesn't mean we're not listening. I, I think we are listening to you and others and folks that are participating in this process. Now, just give you the example that I've given before. On the affordable housing issue, um, the Board of Selectmen started with a report that we received from a committee that was appointed before most of us were on the Board of Selectmen. And we vetted that through a, a public hearing process, and we changed it. 
we listened to the concerns. We made at least three significant changes before we got it to this point. We pared down the areas that we were willing to consider looking at higher density substantially. Pared it down. We took off the list um, any uh, further study of the question of whether we should try to create financial incentives to, to solve some of the affordability issues. And I think most significantly, a number of folks said, you know, you got to slow down and look at your our infrastructure, both our existing infrastructure and whatever limited capacity we have to expand it before you start making some of these decisions. So we, we, we're doing those things. I think you'll see some more of that tonight. So before we get into the, um, the actual items on the agenda, does anybody around the table want to comment on that further or disagree with it? We all still on the same page? Not what I said. Yes, sir. This is not easy work, and I'm grateful you guys are being willing to do it. Everybody in the room, our staff doesn't get paid any extra to do this work, so we're, I am personally grateful that they're willing to take the time to do it. So, are we okay? Mr. Myers, in case you didn't know, is less than 60 days removed from open heart surgery. That's how much, uh, I say it kind of facetiously, but how much he cares about this town. He's sitting here tonight um, to work on these issues. All right. All right. So the next item on the agenda is a review of a discussion of our plan objectives and recommendations. Again, just a reminder. So um, the board of select and approved an affordable housing plan whose really only action items were a list of things that we thought we should study further. We uh, uh, committed the list in writing. Um, and then with Abby and Erica's help, we re reduced the list to this spreadsheet. We had a joint uh, planning and zoning commission a few months ago to start to divide up who would do the work, who would be primarily responsible and what the next step were. We committed to meeting right around this time as a follow-up. So the main purpose of this item on the agenda is um, uh, Erica and um, Abby uh, took a preliminary draft of what the next step should be. At our last meeting, remember, we already did who the responsible party would be, so that column is for the most part not new. That's just stuff we've already agreed on. The next step column is brand new. We didn't, when we last left, we didn't have that column in the spreadsheet because we added it. And then we populated it by some suggestions, expected outcomes, um, there's some new population in there, and then some target um, delivery dates. Um, so I think the main purpose tonight, and it, uh, those of you guys who are following along at home, I'll give you the short version. Most of this you will see our next step says to put on hold, because if we're, we are we have, um, in the process of completing a sewer capacity study doesn't make any real sense to proceed on a lot of these issues until we get the information from that study. So um, let's um, just kind of go through it. Um, has everybody had a chance to review it? Or what, has everybody has generally had a chance to review it? We discussed it, Mark, at uh, right. our last uh, planning zoning meeting. All right, so you, a lot of the stuff that's populated on here, you guys have already discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so. Um, Mark, I would just add that um, on target delivery date, that's something that um, Abby and I plugged in. So as we continue through the spreadsheet, we can talk about that as well. It's something, you know, we just tried to make it sort of spread out enough to first this time, you know, staff to do it. And, and but again, with the other things that are going on, like the, the center study or the uh, uh, sewer study. So, <coughs> One other thing I meant to say in my preliminary comments, but again, somebody objectively disagree, is just we, we want to make sure everybody understands where we are. The fact that we are willing and processing through discussion of these items is not an indication one way or another whether we're committed to doing any of the items or not doing any of the items. We are committed to discussing them and discussing them methodically in the big picture with other things that we are trying to discuss. So I think you'll see that reflected in, the, in this chart. I did look at the, the target delivery dates. I thought for the most part they were fair given what we know now, right? So a lot of this stuff really makes no sense to spend anybody's time on until we, we get some information back on our, our, particularly our sewer capacity, our current sewer capacity. 
of the stuff that we are moving forward on, I think makes sense for us to move forward on, just to begin, because they're not directly necessarily tied to our sewer capacity. And why not work on them as we have time? Um, the only question I had was on page three. 3A. That's the only time that you push it out to 2025. Is that a typographical error? The rest of the stuff that we sort of put on hold, we all said 2024. Is that a typographical error? Or no, that? I don't think it's a type. I know we had a 2025. Um, Tell us what your thinking was there. Well, that one would go further out. Yeah, so um, I, honestly, I think that's a heavier lift. Um, looking, I mean, because that's, and that would be a pretty substantial change too, you know, considering smaller lot sizes. Um, so that's, yeah, that's something why we decided it might be good to push that out, see how everything else pans out, and then tackle that one towards the end. Just um, educate me a little bit. So again, all of these items where we're discussing looking at um, our lot sizes and our density, for lack of a better term, they're all limited to where we have public water and sewer. Right. Do we have a lot of vacant land that is currently served by water and sewer that, that single family housing is appropriate on? Because that's what this addresses, is single family housing. Correct. Right. Is um, that another reason to push it out is because there's really not a lot of that available? That's part of it, <coughs> yep. Um, and it also speaks to in other locations where there are suitable soils, so not necessarily on water and sewer as I well. See. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, I think we need to be a little bit more thoughtful about that. Right. What does everybody else think? Are you comfortable with their proposed next steps in general timelines? Those are the for all practical purposes, what's new on this chart? The other thing that Kathy and I discussed that we would want to mention just a little bit, uh, we all know how time goes quickly. And 2026 is coming quickly with the next version of our POCD that we need to do. And that does take at least 24 months, you know, to, to work on. And, you know, we're going to just start hitting up against those kind of things, too. So that's just another consideration of, of the timeline for some of these. And some of these will naturally be incorporated, possibly, into the POCD. I'm sure they will. Okay. All right, um, I didn't put a motion on the agenda. We didn't put a motion on the agenda. I'm not sure that we need one. Anybody have any objections from all of us reviewing the word draft and starting to work on this, these timelines, these tasks? Speak now. If you have any well, I, I, uh, just from the commission discussions, uh, I, don't, I don't see an issue in this other, other zoning commission yet. Uh, two items I think on here we look at. I think we can get that done in the time frame discussed. Has there been any discussions with the two water companies at all yet about just like possible? I don't know. No, we haven't said okay. that. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think to be clear, I mean, we're looking at it's, we've been talking about a sewer study, but it's also the water, uh, the two, we have it in our maps, the two water districts in town. And I know we've talked about it, uh, you know, planet conservation development talks a lot about public infrastructure, sewer water, um, and we want to make sure both of those go hand in hand, right? So we're not just looking at one. Thanks, Mark. Those are also a little bit more complicated for us to get studies out of because we don't directly control them. So we control the sewer district, so we can do a study of those. We have to build up that make a different lead time into it. Paula, you good? Oh, it's a little hard to hear you sometimes, but I'm, I'm surviving. <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> All right. No objections? <laughs> All right. All right, so hearing no other further objections, we'll start to utilize this document as our guiding tool for what we're doing next and when. All right. 
All right, the next item for discussion is a discussion on the scoping process regarding the town center study. Again, just a, by way of background, we talked about this at our last joint uh, meeting. But this is the way I wrap my own particular head around how to describe this issue. Don't, don't hold me exactly to this. Um, I think some looking at planned long-term growth in certain areas in our town is something we have to do wherever we end up, whether it's no growth or limited growth or some sort of you know controlled growth kind of stuff. I, I think it behooves us to look at it. I think it's necessary for us to look at it. And frankly, it's incorporated, it, if not expressly, implicitly in our, our strategic plan and the stuff that we want to do. To me, the critical starting point is what we call the town center because that's where the public water and sewer is. So that's the only intelligent place to start. So I think this is, a, again, something that we are not, by any stretch of imagination, required to do. But I think it's it's good work that we are doing. And, um, and so um, where we left it last time was doing a town center study, the, the first step really should be just, just start to scope it so we know otherwise the, the direct the discussions can go off in all kinds of different directions. You waste a lot of time and money. Um, we haven't committed to spending a single dime yet on anything, um, but uh, we asked you guys, the, the Planning and Zoning Commission, the experts to make a recommendation to us on, on how to conduct that scoping process. And so, uh, Abby and Erica um, give us a memo on um, your recommendations. So, Abby, you want to walk us through it? Sure. So at the commission's um, January 10th meeting, um, it was discussed further and it was agreed to recommend the following. Um, so town staff would prepare a draft scope. It would be circulated to the Development Commission and Planning and Zoning Commission for input. Planning and Zoning would then hold a public session um, to hear from um, our residents what they think. Uh, planning and zoning would then compile input from development commission and the public session to finalize the draft scope and it would be referred to the board of selectmen for final review um, and it was noted um, that a subcommittee should be established to oversee the Grammy center study process okay um so i can I'll, I'll, so can i go ahead no it's also um timing wise um the commission just we didn't discuss in detail but we do want to get the scoping process done relatively sooner than later, so that uh, we want the uh, whatever subcommittee is developed that they can start to dig into it. And um, you know, my idea was if we can go through these these five items here by our last meeting in February, discuss it in our early March meeting, and then we can get something back to the selectmen. Uh, we think Abby by the second. So that second selected meeting in March would be um, if if we can as a commission get that to you that item number five, which is the draft scope. And again, our intention we discussed is that the scope is going to be suggestions, but it's not going to be limiting. If the subcommittee, if we all agree to have the subcommittee, they would be uh, if they uncover something or want to pursue a different scope item, that's fine. I mean, we don't want to box people in. Let's start with there. Well, I, I assume you planning and zoning commissioners, I don't need to ask you what you think, right? This is what you think. <laughs> <laughs> For selectmen members, what, what do you think about this process that they've outlined and the rough timing at the end of March? Good, but I think it makes sense. Seems fair to me, right? Yep. Maybe? Yep. I have a question. The subcommittee would be um, established by the Board of Selectmen, correct? Yeah, no, I was the next. Uh, Sorry. Once we get through, everybody's OK with this five-step process and the relative time frame, which sounds like we are. That was going to be my next. Do um, you guys actually mean a subcommittee of the Planning and Zoning Commission or? No, it would be a center. You could, we could call it a subcommittee or a center study committee. We were thinking it'd be somewhere to the farm store community where a uh, members were selected. There were some members from the public and some more. You know, I, I throw out maybe a five-member board 
where we could get some uh, representative from planning and zoning, representative from the selectmen, representative from development, and perhaps two members of the public would be a suggestion to throw out there. That's no secret. I like that suggestion because again, we got ultimately whatever we do, we have to work together and then implement together and having some public yeah. input on it. Successfully, yeah, we've had good success with the input from public. Okay. Um, and that could be a parallel process up to you know up to the selectmen if you want to do that in this start that process between now and March and board of selectmen any any objections to that general idea? It gives us a couple months to figure out how we want to play it out. If I, if I could, Mark, um, the, the subcommittee, if we're going to include members of the public who aren't already members of the Board of Selectmen or Planning and Zoning or town staff, uh, would, how do we go about selecting them in a timely manner? Yeah, I think that's something that we need to discuss on the Board of Selectmen, how we want to do that process. Yeah. I don't think we have to make that decision tonight. But okay. If they have it, if, they're not going to have a scope until the end of March. We have a little bit of time to discuss how we want to go about choosing it. So the subcommittee wouldn't be working with planning and zoning through these five steps. It would be for the center committee after we've scoped the committee. Uh, sorry, after we've completed the scope. I, as I understand it, that's the planning and zoning commission's recommendation. But as Chairman Rockwood said. It won't be constraining. It'll be here's what we suggest to scope it, almost like what we did with the Charter Commission, which the Charter Revision Commission, which we said, and look at any issues. So they're going to give them three or four issues, as I understood what you said, and then say, but you know, the committee will be free to look at other issues. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense to me, and it fits better with the timing. I was concerned about trying to get exactly. the committee formed and populated in time to support a uh, march or late February conclusion of the uh, five steps here. Okay. All right. Um, so is everybody comfortable with that? Then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll make a decision tonight on the, the exact process for selecting that committee. The board select and kind of, kind of take that off the line. In one of our meetings, discuss it and make some decisions. Everybody good with that? All right. Is, is there anything else that we need to talk about in the town center? Anything you want to get off your chest then? Okay. No, I would just mention we mentioned it in our last meeting. Um, uh, Mark, Mark number three, or Mark number one, maybe. I think Mark number one brought it up. He is clearly, he is Mark, Mark, clearly Mark one, Mark two, Mark three. Um, but that our neighbor, East Granby, has endeavored on such a, a study, and um, they have actually put out. They have a uh, consultant on board. They've engaged um, Goman and York. And Abby and I are actually going to meet with First Selectman uh, next week and discuss what they've done, what they're looking to do, just to get a, a better idea of what our neighbors are doing. Thank you for the reminder. So, we, uh, Eric is going to. No. No. Eric is actually committed to doing a report to our board selectman in one of our meetings on just what East Grandview is doing. It might be relevant, it might not be relevant, but it doesn't hurt to see so thank you. I think, Mark, so we discussed a little bit in our meeting and, and um, you brought up last time, if this committee that's the center study committee, they, they want to use a consultant or they need, you know, that that's something that you want them to, I don't want to make a, assumption of myself or the commission that we, we need something without them. You know, we've had a lot of success in town with our committees doing work. We also want to give them the tools if they, they need some data that they can get that in. Anything you find out from our partner neighbor towns would be very helpful. Awesome. Do we need to do any other, any other discussion on this? Everybody good with where we are in that? Okay. Okay, nothing. We will move on to the public session part of the agenda. I'll just start on Zoom because it looks like it might be a little easier to go there first. Does anybody on Zoom uh, want to address us in public comment on um, these issues? Okay. 
we will go to those in the room, and, and I forgive me, but I will ask you if you want to come and just come to the microphone, because otherwise I don't think they'll be able to pick you up. Um, did you steal it from there? All right, so Paula can hear us. Okay. Anybody in the room? Come on, go for the chat. You want to talk? Yeah, just come on. Come on. Sorry, but I'm not hearing a challenge. Not a joke, actually. Yeah. No, I, I, I thank you for reminding me. You were looking at me funny, and I wonder why. So I just want to say one thing, and just a side note. When you're all sitting up around the, uh, the table over here, you have the microphones, and it's perfectly clear coming over on the audio, whether you're watching on Zoom or you're watching on CCTV. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Before I go any further, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Reinhard Meyer, 138 Day Street. And I know some of you are saying, oh, no, not him up there again, but. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, tonight's discussion I'd like to talk about is the sewer studies. And before I go any further on the study, I'm not challenging the study that was authorized in the sense of that. Uh, I don't okay. disagree. Are, are, are you, are oh, you sorry. Us? I'm sorry. Sorry. We'll start it. We'll start again. We're going to keep a timer at five minutes. We're going to keep a timer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just so we know. I mean, it's not fast. I forgot to set it. I set it so it goes off. So I did. We're not just <laughs> when the, when the timer ends, we're going to hear it by the seas. Yeah. So when you hear it, it means wrap up. That way we're not distracted by trying to figure out how much time we have. Okay. Am I starting now? Good. Yeah. All right. Sorry. My name doesn't count. No. Okay. Anyway, what I want to discuss briefly is the uh, sewer study. Okay. I'm not challenging the study that was issued and approved upon, whether the scope of work or the cost of the study. Okay. For those of you in a planning and zoning who didn't see my presentation to uh, the Board of Selectmen. I did a presentation in the sense of a written presentation to what I thought would be the appropriate method of looking at this. Now, when I saw what came through as far as this infiltration study is concerned, what it appeared to me what was going on here is something that's a little bit different than maybe you're interested in or you need to know this because it has a lot of potential cost impacts down the road, okay? And this is aside from anything with housing or whatever. Is concerned. Okay. What do they mean by infiltration? Infiltration is two things. Basically, water leaking into the pipes and people hooking up uh, sump pumps. And it happens the time of year, and they want to do the study flow, they're supposed to do it in the springtime where we, the water tables are high. Actually, to do the study, they should be doing it now. Okay. The reason why they're doing this, okay, in my opinion, okay, although the town engineer didn't state this, but it's my conclusion, and from other things I know, the sewage treatment plant down in Simsbury gets over flooded with uh, infiltrated water during peak seasons. And what happens is they actually have to dump raw sewage into the Farmington River. Well, I don't want to get an argument back and forth. Go ahead. No, but, no, they have to, okay. Uh, they have a, there is a permit they get that's a national permit and it's, it's administered by the state, right? The point being, okay, that to address this, there's one or two things. Either you correct all the in inputs going in, which is also very difficult, or you're going to have to expand the plant down to the other end, right? If they have to expand the plant to the other end, it has to be a joint effort with Simser, which owns about 60% of it. Farm, uh, excuse me, Avon owns about another 30, and we own a little under 10. Those costs to do that could be, depending upon the size, anywhere from $50 million to $100 million, right? So you need to be aware of that up front. So you're looking at some prices like an you know, oversized kitchen. Now that is one aspect of it, right? uh, The other thing is what I was wanting to do, I wanted to see what the pipe sizes were and have the flows associated with it. Uh, town engineer actually admitted that the, at least the main run pipe right down Simsbury is well oversized, all right? That's because I know, because 10 years ago, we had uh, Pierce put a new piping system in. But that's still relevant to the allocations that you have, okay? I still want to see that, all right? And that's an important aspect of it. In addition to this particular study, and that's something the town engineer should be able to do and hand over to us, not have to pay anybody like Tate and Bond to go ahead and do that. So, now, how many, so how many, what was my time on that? Okay, a minute and 50 seconds left. Oh, uh, I yield my time to anybody else. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. 
Okay, anybody else? Flanagan Wood, Woodcliffe Drive. Um, Abby, I got a question. I mean, not Abby, uh, Erica. Uh, what was just talking to me? I'll get. I'll write them all down. Just write them. Oh, I think she could answer me. I uh, came up at a meeting last night. What um, What's the problem with Salmon Brook Park, the pump station? <clears throat> Not yet. Because I want to, I want to be efficient and see your time. Let me write down all your questions. Is that your only question? No, I got a few. Okay, so ask them all, and then we'll go we'll through. I've never done it like this. I don't want to use up all of your five minutes. To give you uh, okay. In the uh, plan here, a draft, it mentions that the, uh, the town would consider doing a trust with developers. Who would fund this trust? Are we going into partnership with developers? I think the tax or the taxpayers should know this. Uh, my opinion, it's not our job to go into business with developers, but I need an answer to that. Okay, another thing. I did some homework during the holidays, and I uh, talked to well, I talked to Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson was told that the 30G and J, where you state that we have to do it, there's no penalties. So when there's no penalties, there's no mandate. You have 40 towns that have told the state they're not gonna do it. You've got eight lawsuits now. And, you know, if you read the bill, if you don't have the criteria for it, if it affects the health and safety of the people, <clears throat> or we don't have the infrastructure. As you stated, Mark, in the comments to the town at these meetings, we're not going to meet the 10%. My concern as you're going to do these studies, and we're starting to spend some money here, and that's why I want to know about the pump station. Okay, I also talked to another gentleman who's in the, uh, the legislature here. I went to UConn with him. He's a Democrat. And we stayed at the same uh, uh, dorm. He also said to me that there is no penalty, so there's no mandate. And what alluded to me to this was the debate, the last debate that Stefanowski had with Lamont. Lamont said that he had to toughen up the affordable housing rules to the town, towns, but he can't do that because it's not constitutional. He cannot do that. So I just want you to be aware of that. And another thing, I thank all of you for your service. You know, I was in service, a, a union rep for 24 years, and I wasn't paid either. I did a, a bang up job. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, before we go anywhere else, let me, let me try this. So the, the answer that I feel most confident in answering is the, the portion of this plan that says we'll look at some trusts. Uh, we're not committed to doing anything at all. And the trust we're talking about, you correct me if I'm wrong, study, not implementing study to see if it makes any sense, is essentially a fee that developers would pay when they come to town, just like they do now on a new development, they pay a open space fee, right? And it goes into a trust fund that we manage to manage open space and to buy open space. It's not a huge fund. And and frankly, if we adopted a affordable housing trust along those lines here in Granby where we charged a fee and it went into a fund that we could use to either develop or, or subsidize affordable housing, wouldn't be a very big trust in Granby either. We don't have enough capacity for growth to do it. That's what we're talking about. Not entering in necessarily uh, partnerships with developers, but looking at what are other towns doing? Does it work for us? Is, is it something we should consider? Did I get that right? Yep, that's exactly right. On the Salmon Brook pump stations, what I would like to do is um, well, let's let's ask Kurt to come because he knows the most about it um, on one of our next agendas, and, and just to give us an update about it. I think I can safely say that with the their, um, the issues there are totally unrelated to everything we're doing here. Right? That's, that's correct, right? 
That is correct. It's yeah. regular maintenance on a sewer line system. Yeah. The, the pumps are old. They're, as I understand it, they're, they're failing at times. They need to be replaced. It's unrelated to what we're doing here. But Kirk Sevens knows the most about what the issues are there, so I'll put that on a future agenda just to get a briefing on that. And I understand your comments. I heard them. It's one of the, that's an example of what I talked about earlier. You guys have advocated all along that the, the state mandate is not a state mandate, and even if it is, there's no penalty for not complying it, so don't. I think we, we're partially doing that. And what I mean by that, again, everybody in the room can um, correct me if you disagree. We're not, I said from the very beginning, whether there was a state mandate or not, I think these are issues we should be talking about in Granby. Affordability of, of housing is something we should be talking about. And I said from the very beginning, when I met with you privately even, we're never going to get to 10%. We are not doing this because the state's telling us to do it or because we're trying to achieve some state standard. We're doing it because I think they're discussions we should be having. And to have them openly like this is not easy. And it's not always pleasant. But we're committed to doing it. That's how we got it. All right, anybody else? All right. Um, Maureen Everly, Silky Road. It seems to me after going through the affordable housing plan, strategic plan, um, there's a word that both groups don't seem to like, and that's impact. And I think moving forward with the center study, that word needs to come more into focus because it's just important for our little town to take into consideration the impacts that it has on taxpayers. And all too often, I get the impression I don't have the trust that that doesn't happen. So please, moving forward with your study um, for the center, um, take a look at all the impacts, those that are currently we are facing and any that may occur in the future. One of the things that uh, jumps out at me, too, is everyone seems to want to push, you know, modern look. And I think when you look at some of the surrounding towns around us, people are beginning to make the legislature wake up and appreciate more the culture, the country type of effect. Uh, for example, John Rowland twice went before the Clinton Planning and Zoning Committee and wanted to put some sort of house in. And the people down there got together, Planning and Zoning listened, and one of the reasons they cited for their denial was the fact that it was not in keeping with the look of what they wanted to see in their town. So please keep that in mind. I think it's important. I don't want to see blue back square here. Um, I don't want to see any more high rises here. I just want to have the traditional look that we have come to appreciate over the years here. Back in the early 80s, the town came together and they fought the big box movement. I don't know how many of you were here to live through that, but eventually <clears throat> the citizens said, we need more in the way of supermarkets, grocery stores, and the car dealership was replaced with Stop and Shop. Um, so again, People spoke, and the leaders of the town listened. Thank you. Anybody else? John Rowan on 15 Maple Hill Drive. Um, you know, it's, it's confusing because each meeting is so different with people. Um, some are emotional, some are more sedated. Um, but it seems more consistent. The agenda is very strong. It's, it's like a mule team. Uh, you know, the same two or three things. We're doing it for you, we're doing it for you, we're doing it for you. I don't know if you're doing it for me or you. I don't know who you're doing what for. Considerations obviously have to be made and thoughts and discussions. Also, I think it would be a great idea that you're talking about people from the public. 
Um, maybe one of these gentlemen would be a nice um, fig leaf to do um, to do that. I don't see in reading between the lines. I don't see a lot of other side views. I, I see speech. I hear speeches of the other side, but I don't see real understanding. I think, in my opinion, of the empathy of the other side. And there's a lot of people in this town that were monitored quite strictly at Grand Living. So if you have an opinion that isn't like this, you're in trouble. But a lot of people I don't think really want that. I think you really need to get why people are here. I mean, I'm a ghetto guy. I moved here. I still go to Hartford. I go to Brantford. I go to those places. I have friends there. They come to see me. Um, I don't know why I would want all these units. You know, November 22nd, it said in the Grand Bay in the drummer, uh, a couple of things, transit route to be studied for possible changes or additional stops. You guys ever gone into Hartford and gone to on a bus or the fast track? Has anybody gone to Brantford or Hartford or Waterbury? A question, you can just nod or say no. Anybody? Yes. Yeah, okay, when? You go on fast track? I haven't been on the fast track, but it looks like it. <coughs> okay, I believe you've been on a bus. Yep. Where did you go to and from? Well, I had to go into Hartford, so. No, but I'm talking in, in the city. Where did you go? By the bus stop, by the rail station. What rail? Station? Why does it matter? Well, you're, you're I, have no problem with the, I have no problem with the city. Uh, but I just asked, what bus stop did you go to? The one right there by the train station. What train station? Well, train, train station. All right, all right, all right. I don't remember. Wait, 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 most of the transit on the bus is homeless people. Homeless, everyone has a car. And it says here also, number five in this thing, actively seek partnerships with affordable housing developers. This is what it says that you, the zoning boards, are going to do. What does that mean? He's laughing, but I, I, maybe. What does it mean to partnership? What is a partnership? To me, it's um, a legal definition is what? A business transaction? To make money or to get favors? What, what is a partnership? What's the exact thing? Is anybody, could they answer that? Or would answer that? I'm going to do the same. I didn't bother. Well, we'll write down the answers and then we'll. Yeah, look. because then you can't be questioned back. Fine. Okay. But I think you should answer that now. I'll give up my time for that answer. And if I have a rebuttal. Also, it says. Uh, you know, you want to, there were 169 towns in, Grand, in, in Connecticut, and everyone is putting in these units. Um, and it's undetermined how many there's going to be. It could be, Cinderella has 600 more additional units, West Hartford on, on uh, Park, uh, on, uh, where the old short of furniture is, uh, where the old seminary is, where the whole hotel at Park Connecticut. You're, you're talking about thousands of units. You're talking an average of all five, six, seven, eight hundred units available within 18 months. You're talking 80 to 150,000 rentals. 80 to 150,000 rentals in the next 18 months. Now, doing studies, and I know you're, you're always studying a lot, where are all these people coming from? Some people say they're going to come from New York or from the other places, but they themselves are going to have the same issue. There's only so many people. If it was one um, situation in town where you had one apartment, okay, or two, um, but you're having multiple in every single town. So where are they coming from? And where are all these stores going to be in the center of town? Who's going to own them and give people a, a break on the rent? Who's going to give them a break on the rent to have a little small business? Because you'll need to. You can't have high rent and have people come in there. So who's going to own the property? Who's going to develop it? Who's going to build it? And who's going to give people a very nice, reasonable rent for them to get started to have a center? 
And where are these people going to walk to? Geislers and all these things? Is that a big event to walk to Geislers? Uh, John, you heard the buzzer. So, thanks. Okay, thank you. I will um, attempt to answer, actually repeat what we said a couple of times on the, the remaining study issue related to active partnerships. I don't think we have anything uh, particular in mind. It's something that we thought should stay on the table because the town owns a, a bunch of land. One way to address affordable housing is to um, uh, attack it on the front end um, in terms of the value of the property. That's how you can reduce the cost of building units. I, we're not committed here to do anything. I think we should look at it. I, in particular, speaking only for myself, I think there's the reason we should continue to look at it is on a very small scale. I think we have a, may not be significant, but the first step in the process, if you read the thing carefully, is to inventory what property we have and to see if any of this makes sense. But we may own some developable single family lots that the town has acquired over the years. So if we could enter a partnership on a couple of those with something like the Habitat for Humanity, shouldn't we be talking about it? That's why it's still on the list. Well, well so, uh, I asked where the people are coming from. That's a great question. That's a great question. All right, this is the answer, which I've given, you just don't want to hear it. No. We don't know, sitting here, where the people are coming to fill these units that are being built. No. What we do know is the developers are not building them on spec. They're building buildings that they have pre-leased. There is a market out there for people who want that type of housing unit, or else they wouldn't build them. That market didn't, it, for all practical purposes, in my opinion, exist at any substantial level over the last 10 years, which is why we never had any pressure to deal with it. I check to see if they're a pre-lease, because I, I don't believe it. I am relying on the newspaper article that I read that said when they announced that plan that they were pre-leasing them and they were going to build them in phases. Did I read it wrong? Does everybody have the I same? I don't know what article you're referencing, Mark. Oh. I do know the Murtha's Way development, all of those um, that are currently on the table for COs are called and spoken for. Um, so there clearly is a demand, and their rent there is like 3000 4000 a month. So there is a market for those. How, how much a month? 3000 to 4000 for the single families, and the duplexes are slightly less, but very expensive. I, I don't believe it. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I'll show all right, all right. Yeah, that's, why I don't, that's why I don't do it. Because you don't want to hear the answer you want to argue. No, no, go ahead, Glenn. We're done. Glenn, go ahead. But now I'm tweeting. I don't want to hear the wrong answer, but go ahead. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here. Um, I do think this actually is your job. It isn't above and beyond. Um, and my hope is that you'll discover through meetings like this that it's actually a more efficient and a more effective way of working by sitting down and rolling up your sleeves and being at the same table at the same time. And then you'll get used to this, can get better at this, and enjoy this, and you'll invite the public to participate. And that is sort of my vision of sort of how Ideally, we'd be, we'd be, um, you, you would be uh, looking after or stewarding the town <laughs> on our behalf as our elected officials. Because it is your job to be wrestling with these, with these big alligators. So, um, two things I think, uh, I, uh, one on each, one, one on the affordable housing and one on the, the town center study. I think that I think one of the big reasons people are nervous, suspicious anxious, whatever, whatever label you want to put on it, is there, the affordable housing plan has no goals. So can you t tonight say what the one or more measurable outcomes or results would be <coughs> that if you do all the things, if you study and decide to implement one or many of the things that are on this list, this is going to be the result. And that's how we'll know that you're doing a good job because you got the intended result within the intended time frame and that it had the intended positive effects and avoided the unintended negative consequences, right? So 
it's hard it's hard for you to even prioritize or make much sense of doing any of these sub items unless you have that context of why are we doing this and so nobody's heard throughout the entire process really since going back to the subcommittee meetings last March why are we doing this anybody same same answer get all your questions out come on um, I've, I've served on the board I'm not asking the questions to be confrontational or to be Annoying or anything else. You're going to get the same five minutes. Minute 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 question to my, my fellow neighbors here who are here on my on my behalf. Right. What what is the what is the goal? What how will we know we've succeeded by implementing whatever we implement called affordable housing? What 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 is the end result? Is it to increase? The population is it to increase the value per the tax value per acre of a certain area of land where the infrastructure is? What, what is what, why are we doing? Um, I'm going to treat you the same as I did everybody else. So, on the five minutes up, we'll answer the questions or we'll keep going. So, until you until you can answer that question, and there's some consensus consensus, and you've tested your answers to that question with the residents that you uh, serve, that you represent, I think it's going to be difficult to, to keep going. Similarly, on the town center study, this is now the third meeting, I think, where you've talked basically around a town center study. I haven't heard anybody actually say in either of these two meetings or the planning and zoning meeting where you guys talked about it, what the hell is a town center study? And now you're asking, and now you're asking, now you're asking Abby to, and her staff or whoever, to, to go off and do a scope, but you haven't given her any requirements because you haven't said what is a town center study. So she's either got to read your minds or take a stab at what she thinks you guys want. It's, it's, that's not an efficient way to work either. And again, it makes all of us watching you and fingers crossed that you're going to do a good job, nervous and everything else because we can't even define what a town center study is. In my mind, it's a combination of essentially envisioning or imagining possibilities for what the center could look like, right? Uh, I gave you, Mark and Mark, I sent you an example of what Manchester did as part of their PSCD process, right? It was a, they had an outside consultant come in and facil facilitate a highly visual, highly uh, public, uh, participative thing, right? Where they drew pictures and said, this is what we want certain areas of the town to to look like. To me, that's basically what it is. <clears throat> and it, it also may be cleaning up some known issues or problems, like we don't have enough sidewalks or we have you know vacant properties or whatever, whatever. But it's a combination, basically, of those two things with some goal, one or more goals in mind. Which again, if you don't, if you don't, have, if you don't start from what is the goal, it's really hard to do any of this kind of work. So. What, what I hope you'll do is give some consideration to getting back together sooner than later and putting a stake in the ground in terms of what the goals are. Or giving us a chance to come to talk with you about what we think the goals are rather than writing down our questions and then not, you know, you still owe me some answers from a couple of months ago actually, but uh, anyway. Right. This. I mean, we're not. We're not here to. We're not here to bash you. We're here. We're here. We're here actually because we, we care. It's, it's, it's pretty important stuff. What the future of the town is going to be like for for us. Right. Our financial futures. Our family futures. If we have families, all that kind of stuff. We're not here to okay. raise hell or, or cause trouble. So. Okay. You heard the timer. Okay. So any any any. Bites on um, the goal we'll make for sure that everybody gets a chance to talk, and then we'll decide whether we can and will answer your questions tonight. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Actually, don't see anybody else in the room that hasn't already spoken. I'm a press agent. Yeah. <laughs> I said I'm a press agent. Okay. All right. Hey. Anybody um, have any thoughts? I hate to be the only one who has thoughts on um, 
uh, Glenn's question. Are we clear what we're doing and why we're doing it? As to the solar study? Or the affordable uh, uh, Paula's got her hand up. Go ahead, Paula. Uh, I, I, I just recommend looking at our plan of conservation and development. I think that's where both of these issues, not issues, but both of these um, scoping um, are coming from. I think that's where you go look. That is kind of the foundation. At least that's what we thought when we put that together nine, ten years ago. Thank you, Paul. I was going to echo that, Mark. The plan of conservation development talks about it. It talks about a lot of things. I encourage uh, all residents to read it. Um, it's a guiding document. It talks about commercial, residential, open space, transportation, education, taxes. Uh, it has a lot of information, and that's what guides these boards. Uh, and Paula is correct. The plan of conservation development does talk about a uh, mix of housing and affordable housing for both. When you look at the, as citizens get older, uh, empty nesters, or whatever you call it, and younger people, um, it's a diversity of uh, people to be in town, um, and that's what the plan does. So I think that is, is a good topic, Mark, uh, what Paul brought up. I can say that in New Jersey, where I'm from, the town of Mount Laurel uh, did not want to address uh, low income housing they had what you know would be called snob zoning refused to uh, vote on anything that would uh, encourage low income housing and ultimately the Supreme Court of New Jersey ordered them and basically took away their power to regulate their own town. I would much rather have us uh, deciding on what low income housing would look like than to have the state of Connecticut at some point in the future come in and say you guys have just been not letting anybody come in who doesn't uh, have the ability to buy a half million dollar McMansion and uh, this is what you're, you're going to do to you. I'd much rather it be decided by us in our own terms. So I think I think you you meant to answer Glenn's question, right? So one of the reasons we are doing a town center study is to make sure that the plans and, or the policies and objectives we set forth, is this what you meant to say? Uh, it's, for, it's, for both, it's for both the, the affordability of housing and the center. I mean, our plan talks about a lot of things, and it is, uh, uh, it's going to be renewed. You're right, Erica, it's uh, up two years. So three years three from years now, so, it's yeah. required, yep. So one way to implement those policies and objectives is to do a study on the town center area where we have infrastructure. There's one of your answers, like it or not. I also would add to that that it, if we're going to take our strategic goals and objectives as they are currently are in the process that talk about managing our tax rates and increasing our grand list and those kind of things, we are accomplishing that objective by focusing on the town center. In fact, we almost have to. It's the only area in town where we have any infrastructure. I would say for myself, and then I'm going to give everybody all the way around the table, on affordable housing, I don't know how many times I can say it. I'll say it again. If you don't like the answer, keep asking, and I'll keep giving you the same answer from me. We are not working backwards from some identifiable goal. At least that's not what I think we're doing. We're not saying we're trying to get to 10% of this or 8% of that. We are saying that affordability of housing is a serious issue in communities throughout the country, including in Granby. We should have some discussions about whether we can do anything about it. And that's what we're doing. If you're looking for us to say, to point to, at the end of this process, we will achieve X percentage of units based on some formula, we re specifically rejected that approach and said, no, the state doesn't, that formula isn't going to make sense in Granby. We're going to try to attack it our own way, and maybe we won't make any impact at all, but we're going to talk about it. From my perspective, that's what we're doing. And they overlap. 
the issues related because everybody immediately equates affordable to density. That is not the case. They are, they are not any more directly related. It, and they can't be achieved by just increasing density. We are living proof of that in Granby because the two projects that have gotten everybody concerned, the Grant and the Station 280, had no relation, none, to our discussions related to affordable housing, and they are not affordable. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Anything else? No. We're, we're, we're done. We're going to go. Uh, somebody made a comment about uh, the bus being filled with homeless people. I rode the bus from 2000 to 2015 with a bunch of travelers. I'm not homeless. I'm an attorney. Uh, two thirds of the people on the bus worked at Travelers, one third worked at the Hartford. It was uh, not, uh, you know, it, it wasn't uh, tons of homeless people coming out to Ravage and Pillage Grand P on there. We were all professional people. And I had a car. The reason I rode the bus was because I hate driving at Hartford. Right. Thank you. Mark. Um. So I can comment on the affordable housing plan. I was on the affordable housing committee that wrote the plan and submitted it to the Board of Selectmen. And the purposes, or sorry, the goal that we had for writing the plan was that it was a state requirement. But we wanted to, as a committee, summarize what Granby should be willing to do to get an increase in affordable housing. Not a goal of 10%. Not a goal of 5%, not a goal of 50%, but to increase our affordable housing with the understanding that diversity of housing makes for a better brand. That was the plan, the committee's uh, belief when they were drafting the plan and then submitted it to the Board of Selectmen, who modified it slightly and submitted it to the state. I guess I would say that um, since I've been involved with this board, which I think is about three years now, um, everything that we've added um, housing-wise in town for the most part has been not just unaffordable, but nearly luxury. <laughs> um, and so there's a lot of people, like good people, like if you're like trying to hire a teacher at the Granby Public Schools and they're in a, on a single income, where could they live in the city of Granby or town of Granby? I mean, it'd be really hard. Um, so I think that you know those people are missing at times, and uh, they deserve to, we at least have to take a look at um, what we could do uh, so that you know, people like that are able to live here. And, and I think I would echo that, that the, no process we would go through is perfect. In fact, they're all imperfect. But this process, I think, gives us the best chance to do that in a way that reflects what Orion says. We understand our responsibility to the, the current character of Granby and our need to preserve it as best we can while achieving these goals. And so discussing these things all together in, in this way seems to me to be the reasonable approach to it. Perhaps not the only approach, but John Well, first of all, I, I love this format. You know, getting together and discussing it, and you know, having public comment. Um, I echo what you said for the affordable housing. As far as the bus, I'm taking the bus, the fast track. Uh, I worked for DOT. I helped build fast track. That's mostly students. It's not homeless. You got a lot of New Britain traveling to Hartford for work and back, and a lot of students from Central going to Hartford to keep Hartford vitalized. So it, it's not homeless. So I don't know where he's coming up with his stats. Honestly, I, I held out a little bit of hope that John was going to ask. The question I thought he was going to ask us is, why do you even need to look at it in Grand? I, I thought that's what he was going to ask us. The answer is, why shouldn't we look at it? We're, we're part of that system. Our taxpayer dollars, either directly here in Granby or indirectly through what we pay the state, pays for that system. So if there's a way that we can increase ridership that helps Granby residents, present and future, why wouldn't we look at it? Right? <laughs> right. All right. Abby? Um, 
don't really have a whole lot to add. Just to your point, I think that it's important that we are having these discussions. One of the biggest things we learned in planning school was after you write a plan, how do you actually implement it and not stick it on a shelf where it just collects dust, right? So I think it's important that, that this is what we're doing. You know, we're discussing the plan, we're picking out key components that we want to study and move forward. Um, so because of that, I'm excited. I think it's good and it's necessary for this community. Scott? Oh, I don't have anything to add. You're going to sit at the table and you're going to go. <laughs> Just taking notes. <laughs> uh, you know, my only comment is, you know, being here for the last 20 years, I just really appreciate the small town feel of the town of Granby and what it has been for me and my family. And I'm here to represent that that's maintained and the character of this town is maintained moving forward. And I'm open to hearing discussions and I'm looking to, you know, see what can and can't be done. But to, you know, ultimately, I'm here to let the public have a voice as well. The, it's not another question. Do you think we can do both? Do you think we can do some long-range planning without destroying what we all you know, decreed before? No, that's to be seen. You know, it's uh, the character of this town for myself is very important. So. You know, I, you know, I think the growth has been substantial the last seven years. We've added on a lot of units, duplexes, uh, you know, cluster housing with the copper. It's a beautiful development, and I appreciate that development. And uh, Harness Way has taken off. We'll see what happens there. You know, need some landscaping, but you know, we're, we're, we're making steps. Is it affordable? That's all debatable. Well, none of those that you mentioned are affordable, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> understood. Right, you got it. It's debatable. All right. Peggy? Um, I don't want to just repeat a lot of what's already been said, but I think when our children grow up and want to live in this town and can't afford to live in this town and have to go elsewhere, and when our retirees, one of which I hope to become soon, um, <laughs> Six days. Want, <laughs> want to downsize, and have no place to go and have to move out of town in order to find an affordable living situation. That's a problem. Um, and it's a problem that we should address. And I think that's what this, to me, that's what this process is all about. And with respect to the town center, I mean, why wouldn't we plan? Um, we have an opportunity to take a look at and try and encourage whatever vision um, we have for the town center. So we should talk about what that vision is. Yeah, I mean, I echo what Peggy said. I think, you know, it's important to have affordable housing, especially for seniors, um, because we do have a lot of seniors in our in our town, and, and many of them might be looking to downsize and still want to stay in the town because they love the town. Um, so I think that that's important, and I think from the town um, center study, we have so much vacancy in our town um, in the commercial real estate. You know, I think we need to figure out how do we revitalize that and, and fill, you know, help fill in some of those spaces and make it attractive for businesses to come in. Yeah, all, all great points. I uh, echo the public transit part too. I mean, increased volume there would help the center, especially if we're going to try to get more businesses in the center. Speaking to Maureen's point, you know, when I rented an office space at Ten Hartford Avenue, we had regulations on what our signs could look like. I know there's town statutes too. Like at the current business, I can't have a big, you know, interior lit sign. So, I mean, those are things that we look at, but it, it'll be on the property owner, too, because Geisler's didn't have the same type of regulations in that clause that you could have any sign. The only time it changed at 10 Hartford was when Starbucks wanted a green sign, so money talks. All right. I, I just think um, a couple thoughts, you know, remembering back to the affordable housing discussions that we had back in the summer, in the spring, almost a year ago. Affordable does not mean low income. Affordable in Granby standards is what mo most people would think. It's still very good income and, and everything. Um, so I, I, I get nervous when I hear connotations that affordable housing is the ghetto, <laughs> that we're getting slums, that we're getting um, that you know some sort of ill type of uh, people that we don't want or something. And then in terms of the growth of Granby and everything, I, I 
I'm, I personally am a lover of history. I have a history degree. That's what I went to school for. Um, I don't like to see things change in that sense, um, but I don't think that communities can also, I don't think they can stay stagnant. And I think that there has to be some change, but I think change can come at different rates or different styles or different things that we do that does not ruin character or things like that. It's just, it takes thoughtfulness and, and planning, um, but just because something changes doesn't mean it's bad and that it's gonna change. Uh, the character of the town, I guess. I mean, we're not going to be, no one's talking like, if people remember Unionville in the 1950s and what it looked like there, and then we had, what, the new revisionism or something, Abby from planning school, that type of work where they just cut down every beautiful building in Unionville and, and made things that really weren't nice, and then 50 years later, everyone tried to get it back. That's not going to happen here. We're not doing those kind of things. These are getting people into vacant storefronts, working on facades, working on landscape, working on streetscape, working on, on um, paths, walking paths, you know, walkability, things like that. We're not going to become Blueback Square. We'll never do that. Okay. So with, without uh, being redundant and echoing most of the comments, uh, some of the things that I've you know, heard tonight and agree with is um, affordability comes in diversity of housing stock and on the plan of conservation and development as well as it was well known Granby for a very very long period uh, of time uh, was mostly single family homes so providing the additional uh, housing stock that we've made good strides in coming in whether they be apartments plan unit developments uh, split families and affordability in these types of units while the uh, rental price or the price of the unit may be I expensive, I still think for some people they still are affordable because they eliminate the costs associated with owning a single family home. The maintenance, the roofs, the lawns, the snow, all of that stuff adds a significant cost to ownership. And while an apartment may be $3,000 a month, it's still a lot more affordable than owning a home. So I think there's a lot of perspective that needs to be put into uh, what is affordable for individuals. And then as far as the center goes, um, our, our center needs um, some work. Um, it it uh, has been known as not necessarily the prettiest center or the um, it's a, a bit disjointed and whatnot. So anything we can do to uh, make the, get the center on a better plan to make it uh, a destination, I think is a good thing for me. I forgot. Uh, I'll just, uh, you know, just on the center, you know, I, I agree with what Eric just said. I mean, the center is uh, it's changed a little bit. I've been here over 20 years, and it's actually some some could argue it's gone backwards in some standpoints. It's gone forward in some standpoints. But you know, part of this this commission I'm on is we're planning also the planning, not just on there. So we're looking at the planning phase of it. And none of us at this table, unless you're uh, going to invest in a, a storefront or a business, are, are going to actually be able to physically do anything. We have to set the environment and then the standards. So we have, are we making the right environment to uh, not have sprawl, but support our center? And then are we doing the right um, things from both the regulations and an appearance wise to keep the, the character of Granby, whether it's a streetscape, the lighting, the signage, the architectural style, which uh, I think we're in a good spot to kind of comprehensively look at that. There's three center zones. Um, things have changed since I've been here, right? Uh, people working from home, telecommuting, not home. Um, you know, I think we have to, if we don't keep up with it, it's it's going to stay staying. I mean, I want Granby to be, be great and continue to be great, right? And, uh, we got to, as planners, look at it. We may come back after the center and say, oh, it's fine. It'll fix itself. You know, the businesses will come, but at least look at it. And the scoping part of it, you know, I think we have a very capable staff. We talked about it in town. From a town perspective, sees it every day. And they, they see people come in. We don't even see a lot of the discussions that go on maybe at your level or at Abby's level. We'll get a groundwork from that, and then the commission will build on that, and then we'll, we'll get the work to go. Okay. All right. So the last thing I will say is, sorry um, to interrupt. Can we hear from Paul, please? Oh, I thought Paul started us. But go ahead, Paul. Oh. 
Um, I don't think there is a word that I can add to all that you've all said. Please. Um, so I will just say you've said it all, and I think it's an exciting process, and I really enjoy seeing the two boards working together, having the uh, public input on huge one, having including the public in all of our study committees. So I think it's a wonderful process. Continue on, please. Thank you, Paul. I'll just say this to you, Glenn, and others that are paying attention. I think you heard the Planning and Zoning Commission commit tonight that they will have a public session as they scope the document. I think scoping and setting the goals for what we want the town center to be are synonymous. I think those are the same things. So if you have specific recommendations on what you want to see the output of the town center study to be, I strongly encourage you to make those specific suggestions to the Planning and Zoning Commission when they hold their public session on the scoping. Anybody else? Any, anything else? All right. <coughs> Hearing none, I will accept a motion to adjourn this. The Board of Selectmen has to go to a brief, brief meeting afterwards, but we can excuse our Planning Commission if that is. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Oh,